When an angry mob gathered in Boston to protest against rising taxes imposed by the British Parliament in 1770, things got out of hand and turned violent. British soldiers, the Redcoats, opened fire and five people died. So why did the fierce patriot and future president John Adams step forward to defend the soldiers in court? At the time, Boston was a hotbed of anti-British sentiment. Many Bostonians believed it was unfair that colonists paid taxes to the crown without representation in the British Parliament, where issues that directly affected their lives were decided for them. Those frustrations often spilled over into violence directed at businesses that boycotted the protests and soldiers patrolling the city. And on March 5th, the Redcoats responded by firing their muskets into a mob of around 400 angry protesters. Five died, including Crispus Attucks, the first death of the American Revolution. In the wake of the Boston Massacre, as it came to be known, eight British soldiers and their officer, Captain Thomas Preston, were indicted for murder. But finding a lawyer for them was not easy, until 34-year-old John Adams agreed to represent them. Despite a very public backlash, which included threats of violence against him and his family, Adams believed that a fair trial would show the British that the colonies were able to take care of their own affairs. By arguing that the Redcoats' commanding officer had not ordered his men to fire into the crowd, and that the remaining soldiers had acted in self-defense, Adams was able to argue a case for reasonable doubt, a standard of proof used for the first time in a North American court. It meant it could not be absolutely proven that the deaths were intentional. As a result, six of the soldiers and Captain Thomas Preston were found not guilty of murder. Two were convicted of the lesser charge of manslaughter. Adams was determined to prove that the colonists could dispense justice, even in the most trying of circumstances. Winning this case was an important step in achieving this. He reflected, it was the greatest service I ever rendered my country. After the Revolutionary War, he became the first vice president and went on to be the second president of the United States. Why do you think it's important to defend the rights of the accused?